Imagine a classroom without that familiar squeak on the blackboard, or a sidewalk without those colorful doodles that fade with the rain. Simple, dusty, and fragile, chalk seems so ordinary that most of us never stop to wonder what it actually is. Is it just crushed rock? Is it man-made? Why does it leave such a perfect mark yet crumble so easily? For centuries, chalk has been the unsung companion of teachers, artists, and even athletes. But behind this humble stick of white lies a fascinating story of chemistry, geology, and human ingenuity. So today, let's dive deep, literally and figuratively, into one of the simplest yet most transformative materials in human history. This is chalk, how it's made, right here on History of Simple Things. To understand chalk, you have to travel back, way back, around 100 million years, to a time when vast parts of the Earth were covered by warm, shallow seas. These waters teemed with microscopic organisms called coccolithophores. They built their tiny shells out of calcium carbonate, essentially the same stuff found in seashells and limestone. When these microorganisms died, their remains slowly sank to the seafloor, forming thick layers of sediment. Over millions of years, these layers compressed into a soft white rock, chalk. That's right, natural chalk is a rock made from countless ancient skeletons, a literal graveyard of microscopic sea life. It's like writing on a blackboard with the ghosts of an ancient ocean. But here's the twist. Most of the chalk we use today isn't chalk at all. Modern classroom chalk isn't mined from ancient cliffs like the famous White Cliffs of Dover. Instead, it's usually made from gypsum, a mineral that's chemically different but works the same way. Gypsum-based chalk is cleaner, less dusty, and easier to produce in factories. True geological chalk, pure calcium carbonate, is softer and produces more dust, which can irritate lungs and stain clothes. So when you see those smooth, uniform sticks in classrooms today, you're holding a piece of clever human mimicry. It looks like rock chalk, feels like rock chalk, but it's really a refined mineral copycat. The journey of modern chalk begins in vast mineral quarries. Gypsum is extracted from the earth through open pit mining, where huge machines carve away layers of sedimentary rock. After blasting and breaking the gypsum apart, it's transported to a processing plant. There, the chunks are crushed into smaller pieces and purified to remove impurities like clay or silica. What's left is a fine white powder, a soft foundation that's ready to be transformed into something familiar. It's strange to think that the same material used for classroom chalk is also found in drywall, fertilizers, and even tofu. But chalk's story starts the same way, as a mineral pulled from the bones of ancient seas. Before it can be shaped, the raw gypsum powder is heated in large industrial kilns. This process, called calcination, drives out moisture and changes the mineral structure. Gypsum, chemically known as calcium sulfate dihydrate, becomes plaster of Paris, or calcium sulfate hemihydrate. Add water to that, and it solidifies again, just like cement. It's this reversible transformation that makes chalk possible. Manufacturers carefully control the temperature and moisture levels to produce the ideal consistency, firm but not brittle, smooth but not too soft. Once the powder is ready, it's mixed with water into a thick paste. And this is where art meets science. The chalk paste is poured into long molds, often silicone or metal, each one shaped like those classic cylindrical sticks. The mixture is smoothed out and left to set, slowly hardening as it dries. Inside the molds, something remarkable happens. Tiny crystals form, 
locking together to create that familiar texture we recognize when chalk glides across a surface. After drying, the sticks are carefully removed, sometimes polished, and then left to cure. In large factories, hundreds of thousands of pieces are made each day, stacked in trays like tiny bones of knowledge waiting to be used. Some manufacturers even add color pigments, creating the pastel chalks used by artists and children alike. After molding, each stick goes through a quality control process. Imperfect pieces, too brittle, too soft, or uneven, are discarded or reprocessed. The good ones are cut to size, dusted, and packaged. Some brands coat their chalk in thin layers of wax or shellac to prevent breakage during transport. Others wrap them in paper sleeves, both for grip and nostalgia. It's a delicate balance. Too much coating and the chalk won't write well, too little, and it'll crumble before reaching the classroom. What started as raw rock now stands as a refined tool of communication, a bridge between thought and surface ready to leave its mark. But Chalk's story doesn't end in the classroom. It's everywhere once you start looking. Athletes use powdered chalk to keep their grip dry in gymnastics, climbing, and weightlifting. Tailors use marking chalk to draw patterns on fabric. Farmers use chalk to balance soil acidity. Even billiards players dust their cues with it to prevent slipping. And in the world of art, chalk's soft texture makes it perfect for blending and shading, giving rise to the term chalk pastels. Chalk might look fragile, but its versatility has kept it relevant for centuries. Whether in a child's hand or an artist's studio, it's a simple tool that quietly shapes creativity and precision alike. Of course, like many traditional tools, chalk has faced competition. The rise of whiteboards, dry erase markers, and digital screens has slowly pushed chalkboards out of classrooms. Some schools have abandoned chalk entirely, citing the dust and the mess, but not everyone is ready to say goodbye. Teachers argue that chalk writing is tactile. It slows you down, makes you think, and even helps with memory retention. There's something satisfying about the sound of chalk tapping against the board, a kind of rhythm that's missing from squeaky markers. And for many, Chalk represents something nostalgic, a link to the way we learned and expressed ideas long before screens took over. So the next time you pick up a stick of chalk, whether you're sketching, teaching, or just doodling, remember what you're really holding. Not just compressed powder, but millions of years of Earth's history, a material that's seen oceans rise and civilizations fall now reborn as the simplest instrument of human expression. From microscopic life to the blackboard, Chalk's story is one of transformation, nature's design reshaped by human hands. It's proof that even the most ordinary things can have extraordinary origins. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.